That's my knee. <clears throat> Hi everyone, I'm Chad. Welcome to the Maker's Bench. So, uh, I've been printing things. Uh, I've been printing things and I've been running this printer for a few weeks now and this isn't everything I've printed but this is quite a bit of it. Uh, I wanted to kind of go over this stuff and I wanted to show you what I've been printing and I wanted to uh, talk about my first thoughts about the printer and, and how it's what it's been like to own a own a 3D printer as somebody who's never had one before and has no experience with one and what the first few weeks have been like. So um, that's what we're going to talk about. So I got the printer running. Uh, hopefully you've, you've seen the build videos. Maybe you've watched those. Um, I had a problem when I first got it going. I had a bad um, had a bad heater cartridge and uh, the heater cartridge was bad so I got a new one I installed that we put some new bearings in did those things uh, got the printer running uh, pretty well and I started making some stuff so I printed the first thing I printed was the bat symbol it was a very simple thing to print very flat very you know not very tall so it was a pretty quick print too um, and that came out okay and what I learned from that was I needed to clean the print bed a little bit better. I wasn't doing a very good job of that, or I didn't on that first print anyway. I think it peeled up a little bit and some stuff. But um, for the most part, my prints have been coming out pretty well. I mean, there's some there's some things I had a couple of issues with, um, but I'm going to talk about that. So let's get into this. Um, the first thing I really printed was Benchy. And as you can see, I've printed a little fleet of Benchies along the way. And I'm going to try to take some pictures of these things or take some video of these by themselves and put that up now instead of seeing me on here but um, I've tried to if I try to put it up by the, the camera it's not really going to focus very well on Benchy but um, one of the things that I noticed about the first Benchy was that I had a uh, it printed kind of it printed okay up to a certain point and then when it got to that certain this this line that you can see on the print it printed beautifully uh, I don't know why it didn't print so well on the bottom half as it did the top half. Printed way better on the top half. Um, the only thing I can think of is that my filament had been sitting for a couple of days out without being stored in anything and maybe that top layer of filament was, I don't know, dried out or, or got moist. I, I don't know for sure. Um, but maybe that once the, the, the coils underneath started printing, maybe that's where it got better. It's hard to say. It's mid-print, so it's one of those weird things. So what I immediately did then was I immediately printed a second Benchy, and second Benchy um, turned out much better. Uh, Benchy looks great. He's uh, there's there's really it's really a good-looking print. Um, you know the circles look like circles. The the bridging went well. Um, the arches look good. Uh, the the little pipe out of the back end looks really good. Um, there's the hole in the bottom and the, and the back end of the boat looks great. Uh, it, it looks really good. I, there's really, I, I, and this is straight out of the box. This was straight out of the box printing. I really, I, I can't complain about it. I thought it, I thought it did a great job. And so I, I printed, and then what I did is I got some other filaments and I, I, I picked up some other filaments. And so I tried to do some, some other things and I picked up this, this red filament. Uh, this red filament is it's inland PLA. Uh, I don't know if anybody's heard of inland PLA before. It was new to me, but there's a store up in the Minneapolis area. We were up there for the weekend, and uh, I we went into this store called Micro Center. Um, and they, they do sell online. I got a kilogram of this red PLA for 15 bucks, so I thought I'd give it a shot and see how it printed. And so the first thing I did was I threw this uh, dinosaur shower head. Uh, on here. One of my friend's boys loves dinosaurs, so I'm hoping that I, I thought I'd print this for him. And it, for the most part, again, it's $15 filament. Um, as I watched this thing print, I thought, you know, there's parts of this that, that just print awesome. And I'll, I'll put a picture up there because showing it on the screen like this is the focus doesn't work very well. Um, but the, the print looks great. I mean, the, the filament looks like it did pretty well. Um, but there's a lot I could see a lot of layering in the uh, in the print and what I had done was I went from the 0.15 millimeter layers and I went down to a 0.1 millimeter layer because I really wanted this to look good and that was my first attempt at messing with settings so uh, but it really layered a, a lot and 
I was watching it print because it took 30 hours to print. <laughs> so I was watching it print some of the time and I noticed underneath my carriage when I put those new bearings in, um, when I when I first put the bearings in, I was having a problem with it binding up in the front, and I thought maybe I had tightened my bearings too much again. So I loosened up the the U-bolt nuts on there, and I had loosened them up quite a bit and got them like finger tight, and was hoping that that would. And then I realized that you know my rails weren't straight, and I went and straightened those out. And uh, go figure, I didn't go back and tighten those nuts up on the on the bearings, so they were they're kind of loose. And as I was watching it print, I could see the the U-bolt moving and the bearing staying still and then the bearing would go and then the U-bolt would move and so that bearing was just sliding around in there and I'm wondering if I created uh, some slop inside of the in you know my Y carriage so that it was just off a little bit here and there and that's why all this layering happened um, I'm not sure so what I did was I tightened up the bearings and I printed um, I printed the uh, Ad 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 Adelina Dragon, I think that's the name, and I gotta tell you, it printed way better. Uh, this $15 filament printed re really, really well. Uh, I did have some problems with stringing. Uh, there's a little stringing going on, there's some stringing going on in the, up here at the wing tips, and there's some really fine hairs all over the place, and uh, I gotta figure out, you know, it's, it's time for me to learn something, I gotta figure out what that is. I, it, I thought maybe it was just I was running it a little hot, maybe I had too, the, the temperature was too high, but I think I was running this at 205, so um, you know the print range on here is, is uh, 205 to 225, so I don't know if it's, I gotta, I gotta start reading up and figuring out what's causing the stringing. So, <clears throat> but it printed beautifully, uh, There's this the back on this dragon looks great, there's a lot of things on here that look really, really good. Um, I guess I had I had also printed the Adelina Dragon um, before I got into the red. This was uh, after I printed, well, after I printed Benji. I printed some. Uh, I printed the gear, the little gear, uh, the the herringbone um, gear spinner, gear bearing thing, and this is so much fun. I <laughs> I love this thing, and it's really really cool. It prints all in one piece. You just pick it up, and it it. it it was free and it started, there wasn't really anything I had to break loose. Um, it was ready to go. So those two things are what I had printed originally. I, I didn't mean to get out of order there, but that I, I did. Um, but anyway, when I compare the two Adelinas, there is layering on the first one that I did too, which would still have the loose bearing. So I think that tightening that bearing up like I should have um, did have an effect on the print. So that's good. Now we got this little bit of stringing issue. And this might be the filament, because it's $15 filament, I don't know. Uh, and that, that's when I got into, well, let's start printing more benchies to find out. So I printed a benchy with that red filament. And um, benchy was a little stringy, uh, just like the dragon. And there's some stringing in the, in the you know, the, the dinosaur head, the T-Rex shower head too, but there's some stringing in here too. So. But it printed beautiful. I mean, it really is good. I think, you know, a little blow of the, the heat gun is going to get rid of all that stringing and stuff. And uh, it, it looks fabulous. It really does. I think it's great. Um, I also got some uh, Hatchbox. This is the Hatchbox Blue PLA. Um, it's, uh, it was, I, it's another filament I just wanted to try. It's on Amazon. And I got that. So I got the Hatchbox PLA. Uh, that is, I printed the I, again. I printed Benchy. I figured Benchy's a not really a, too terribly long of a print, and it gives me a good baseline to see what what everything's printing at. Um, and again, there was some, there was a little bit of uh, stringing going on in here too. So maybe I've got something blocking the fan. I, I don't know. I, may, I don't think so, but who knows? Maybe the, I gotta I gotta read up on it. But there's some stringing happening now. Uh, which wasn't there before with the silver stuff, although there's a little bit in the last Benchy I printed in silver too, so. Um, but yeah, Benchy looks great, and then and in the blue, and then I also have some, I got some Matter Hackers Pro PLA, and this is the uh, transparent or translucent aqua. It's a really cool looking color. I got that for my wife. She thought that was pretty cool, so I got it for her. 
I don't know if she really wants me to print anything for her, but I, uh, I, I did get it for her. And I printed Benchy in that, and Benchy looks really good in this too. Um, it, it printed really well. I'm really impressed with how all of this is really printed. Uh, I really haven't messed with any settings, um, and it's it's been printing great. Uh, I also, before I did all these benches and stuff, um, my my CAD tutorial that I did here was uh, making a fidget spinner. So I did actually go ahead and print the fidget spinner that I did in the in the tutorial. Um, and I, the first one I did, I had the the hole for the bearing is a little too tight, and I think the holes for the uh, steel balls are a little too tight. So I bumped the tolerances up on my CAD model and I reprinted it and um, made some caps for it and um, you know we have a fidget spinner that works so it's um, it's pretty cool uh, that was that was kind of fun to do I printed some for some friends and family as well uh, different ones but very similar uh, the last thing I've been doing now is I started messing with uh, Angus put up this uh, tolerance test so this tolerance test is designed to tell you you know what what kind of tolerances you can get out of your printer um, and so basically how close can two walls get together before they fuse up right so um, the, the center the center piece here is a 0.5 millimeter tolerance between the walls and then there is a there's a 0.4 a 0.3 a 0.2 0.15 0.1 and then there's a 0 0.05 now the 0 0.05, I couldn't even get it to separate in the slicer. So when, every time I would slice it, I would come up with the, you know, do a preview of the of the layers, and as soon as you get down, it's just printing infill across there. So there's no way that this 0 0.05 is going to go. Uh, I couldn't get it to slice. I even messed with some settings, not really knowing what I'm doing, but I played it to settings to try to see if I could get that to slice so that it would recognize it, but it wouldn't. Um, but the, the 0.5, um, that one came out just fine. 0.4 turns, uh, no problem. 0.3, uh, that one turned, you know, without doing anything. Uh, also the 0.2 uh, turned as well, which I was pretty happy about. I might have had to put the, the little key that you print off. There's a little key that comes with this thing um, from from uh, Angus at Maker's Muse. He made a key for this. So you put the key in here uh, and you can break them loose if they're a little, just a little stuck together. Uh, and that one broke loose. And then the 0.15 millimeters between walls, um, I did get that to turn on here. Uh, I had to use pliers. Uh, the key was a little too tough to turn by it, just with the little key. So I got a pair of pliers, I clamped down on there, and I started turning it, and I got it to turn. So um, I don't know that I would design anything this tight because this is really tight, but it does turn in here. Uh, so it, it, it does that, so that's pretty cool. And then, and this is printed at 0.15 layer height. Um, so I, you know, thought, what the heck? I'll, I'll see if uh, because I don't know anything yet. I'm still new, and I thought maybe if I printed at a 0.1 layer height, uh, maybe maybe things would be, you know, maybe we can get down to the uh, 0.1. You know, maybe that 0.1 would free up. Um, and so I printed it at point or at the 0.1 layer height. And basically, I got the same thing: 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, um, all turned. And then the 0.15, I had to put the pliers on and turn it. The one thing I will say is that the 0.15, once broken loose, does turn better in the 0.1 layer height uh, than it does in the 0.15 layer height. So I don't know. Maybe that's a start. Maybe that's part of it. But um, I think maybe I have to actually mess with um, the. Uh, layer width, you know, when it lays down a, a, a layer of the extrusion width of the plastic, maybe a little lower width on that would help. Not sure, but point one again did not turn. So that's what I've been printing. Uh, I've been having a good time with it. I, I'm really enjoying this thing. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, this printer so far has been, um, you know, it was fun to put together. It was, it was a lot of fun to learn how to you know, even even with the, having the problem with the heater cartridge, it's so. Like I said, I've been having a great time with this printer. I think that if anyone is looking for a printer, I highly recommend this printer. I think that this is this printer has been worth every penny I paid for it. I'm having such a good time with it. Uh, it's been printing right out of the box. I really haven't messed with any settings. 
the slicer software seems to work pretty well. It's pretty fast. At least from not having any experience with slicing software, it doesn't seem like it's taking too long. And it's really easy to use and it's been very, very good. I mean, it prints great without messing with settings. So, um, and of course, I'm going to start messing with settings because I have to, I haven't had a print fail yet. I haven't had any catastrophes. I haven't had anything happen yet. So, um, I don't think I'm a real 3D printer until I've had a print fail. So, I think I need to start messing with settings so I can get something to fail because I, I need to figure out what they mean, how they work, and what they can do for me. So, I can, I mean, as much as I know that these are really good prints, um, I feel like I can do more because I haven't even touched the settings yet. And I can't believe it just came out of the box and is going to print as well as it's going to print. I think that I can certainly dial some stuff in and maybe make this stuff even better. So um, that's kind of a challenge and that's something I'm going to look forward to trying to get done. But uh, again, I highly recommend the printer. Um, my initial thoughts on it so far are just, uh, it's blown me away. My, it's been beyond my expectations and my expectations were pretty high. Um, I saw a lot of reviews, I saw a lot of good things said about it. but. It's been, it's lived up to every one of those reviews and I am having just a ton of fun with it. So if you're looking for a, if you're looking for a printer, this is a good one. And I've got a lot of ideas and a lot of things I want to do with it now. So um, as far as what I got coming up next, uh, I want to do, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little project. Um, I got myself a, part of the problem with doing time lapses. I love doing time lapses of the prints. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, but one of the problems I have is that my camera uh, has a battery and the battery will go dead before the print is done. So I got a, I got a GoPro and one of the other things with the camera is that it sits on the tripod on the other side of the table and I, I zoom in and I get stuff but everything's moving. So I got a GoPro and what I'm going to do is make a mount and I'm going to make a mount so that my GoPro can mount to my print bed um, from underneath my print bed and I'm going to have the camera right out here in front and as the bed is moving the camera will move with the print so you know as your as your print is going back and forth the camera view won't change you'll have that print will be there the whole time and uh, hopefully as the you know the uh, time lapse happens we'll get to we'll have less movement going on and, and hopefully that'll make a make a little bit better time lapse so I'm gonna try I mean, that's the first thing I want to do is build that GoPro that little GoPro mount for the for the printer here. And if it works, um, I'll put it up on Thingiverse. I know there's a couple out there already, but I just want to make my own because that's part of the fun for me. Um, so I'm going to make my own and, and we'll see if we can get it to work and get something that makes some really nice uh, time lapses. Um, I have some other ideas too. I'm not going to share those yet, uh, but I've got a, I've got some projects planned out and I've got some, some of these projects are going to be several videos, just putting some stuff together and, and trying to get things built and Put them, get them printed, and, and and the other stuff beyond. 3D printing is just a part of what these projects are going to be about. So, um, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, if you got the printer, or if you're thinking about getting the printer, or whatever, you know, let me know about your experiences with the Prusa, or if you want one, or if you're getting one. Uh, put them in the comments below, please. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, like the video if you liked it. If you don't, go ahead and, and give it the thumbs down. But uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.